This is the new Range Rover Evoque. We know the Evoque is perfect for cruising sunny boulevards and looking stylish on the school run. But even so, this Evoque is a bit special. It is highly unlikely that any buyer of the Evoque convertible would ever venture off-road. But come on, surely it's worth a try? However, I do foresee some issues. As you might have guessed, this car isn't mine. And it costs 1,031,634 Rand. Yeah, so I really don't want to break anything. And then there is this front bumper. It's very sporty, so it's very low, and that gives this car a rubbish approach angle. And then there are the tires, which are continental cross contacts. Not too bad, but not ideal for off-roading. But I mean, it has a Land Rover badge on the front, so that means it can go off-road, right? Convertible off-roading. The thrill of having the top down with the adrenaline of going off the tarmac. Why has no one thought of this before? It's a whole new world. I feel like singing that Aladdin song, but I won't. So when Range Rover announced that they were going to make a convertible version of the Evoque, I thought to myself, well, we have to take that off-road, obviously. That might have been the underside of the car. This car doesn't have the best ground clearance, if I'm honest. Oh, there it is again. Yeah, that's that's not great. Okay, whoa, that's steep front bumper. Please don't scratch. Yeah. Okay, this is a little bit more stressful than I anticipated. Uh, losing grip. And there we go, the power gets sent to the right place. So it kind of feels like you're getting stuck just for a moment while the system's working out the best place to send all your power. And then once it kicks in, it's fairly impressive. But the actual shape of this car was making things tricky. I can't see a thing. I can't see anything over the bonnet can't see anything out my window there's such a high shoulder line and I know why they do that it looks good it makes it look sporty and also it's much better in an accident it sort of helps protect you in a side impact but out here sheesh I could really do with that old defender driving position under the bonnet I've got a two liter turbo petrol motor decent power and torque 177 kilowatts 340 newton meters and while the engine hasn't changed the drivetrain certainly has up until 2014 Range Rover Evokes had a fairly traditional Haldex all-wheel drive system but from 2014 onwards Land Rover turned to a company called GKN now you've probably never heard of them and I hadn't either, but they do a lot of work behind the scenes with car manufacturers and they've built drivetrains for the BMW i8, the Porsche 918 Spyder, the Audi RS Q3 and most recently the Ford Focus RS. In fact the system in the RS is basically identical to the system that I've got in this Evoque. But out here, when you need all-wheel drive, the system kicks in and there are two clutches on the rear axle. And what that means is that the system can electronically control which wheel the power is going to. And it all happens really, really quickly. And they think it's more efficient and better than having a traditional rear diff. But I think by taking the roof off, the Range Rover have slightly detracted from the premium feel of this car. And that's because it's a little bit creakier than you would expect. It's 
a little bit noisier in here than a car with a roof. And what's particularly annoying me is this driver's door. It rubs up against the body panel where it meets the car and it's just this kind of constant eh, 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 squeak, squeak, squeak eh, eh, in my right ear. That would get annoying. But this new roof has created a few practicality issues. To convert the Evoque into a convertible, the Range Rover engineers really had to rethink the back of the car. And so the roof gets its own little compartment to fold into, and it doesn't affect the boot space. Then they had to design this quite odd little tailgate. And allow me to draw your attention to what I think is a bit of an issue with the Evoque convertible. It's not that the boot isn't deep. I mean, I can barely touch the back of it actually. And it's not that it isn't wide, but as you'll see with our standard cooler box test, I must admit, I am quite impressed with this thing. I mean, it's obviously not as good as a normal 4x4, you know, one with a roof, but it's not bad. So, what have we learned today? We've learned that if you drive really carefully and really gingerly, you can take an Evoque convertible off-road. But if I'm honest, you probably shouldn't. That was horrible. Ooh, a f that's going to need a vacuum. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and we'd love for you to join our community by subscribing to our channel.